now that we know how to tell the difference between independent and dependent sampling for qualitative data for proportions, we want to be able to run the hypothesis test for that qualitative data. And this is the last hypothesis test we're going to learn in this chapter. This is the hypothesis test for testing the difference between two proportions for independent samples, also known as a two-prop Z test. And just a little side note here. We're not going to be doing this test by hand. We'll be using the calculator and or reading computer outputs to do it. In particular, step three right here is really just tedious. It's not super hard to find, but it's, it's kind of tedious and annoying to find by hand. So we'll just make the computer or calculator do it for us. And then other than that, you have the similar six steps approach that we've seen many, many times over. This is a Z distribution again, because this is for proportions again. And we will see how it works in practice for an example. So apnea of prematurity occurs when premature babies have shallow breathing or stop breathing for more than 20 seconds. One therapy for this condition is to give caffeine to the premature infants. Medical research has conducted an international study in which one sample of premature infants was randomly assigned to receive caffeine therapy and another sample received a placebo therapy. Researchers Researchers compared the rate of severely negative outcomes, death, and severe disabilities in the two groups and determined whether the caffeine therapy would lower the rate of such bad events. The caffeine group included 937 infants, of which only 337, 337, 377 excuse me, <laughs> suffered death or disability. The placebo group had 932 infants, of which 431 suffered death or disability. Okay, so our first mission is to find P1 hat and P2 hat. So P1, um, they're telling us that group 1 is the caffeine group. Let me just kind of bold that, underline that for us. So since that's the caffeine group, let me make them yellow. I don't know why. Maybe if you drink a lot of caffeine, you turn yellow. And you can see here that they have the information that you need. The caffeine group had 937 infants and 377 suffered death or disability. So when babies are born prematurely, their lungs are not fully developed, and that can be very, very deadly for those babies. And so they're trying to administer to caffeine to see if it will stimulate the system and get the babies to breathe better. And the placebo group is group two, and that'll be the um, 932 infants, of which 431 suffered death or disability. So P1 hat is three, or 377 divided by 937, which is 0.402 approximately. And P2 hat is 431 over 932, which would be, let's see here. There we have it. And you can see in this graph the comparison here. So here's the caffeine group over here on the left, and you can see that 40% of the um, babies, the premature babies, had a bad outcome, where 60% of them did not. And in the placebo group, the difference appears to be much um, less pronounced. So those that were given the placebo, the bad outcome was 47%, 46%, and the, bad, the good outcome is a little bit over 50%. So it seems like caffeine is doing something, but we're going to have to prove it. But before we can get to proving it, we're going to need to verify that we've met our requirements for conducting a hypothesis test. So let's go back and look at that. And actually, I'm just going to pull up the inferential statistics sheet. So we need to have the samples be independently obtained using simple random sampling. We need n times p times 1 minus p to be greater than 10 for each group. And then we need um, little n1 to be less than 0.05 capital N1, for, again, for each group. So let me type all that up. All right, so let's see. We have independent, simple, random samples, SRSs. And that's definitely, yes, that was given to us in the problem. So let's see where it was given. Let's see. Medical research has conducted an international study in which one sample was randomly assigned to receive caffeine therapy, and another sample was randomly assigned to receive placebo, right? So that random assignment right there, that's kind of implying that, of course, these are not entirely random babies because they're premature, so they're, there's something that they all have in common. But nevertheless, their random assignment into the two groups um, gives us that this is um, independent and random, at least enough for our purposes. 
then we need to prove that n times p times 1 minus p is greater than 10. So I'm starting it here for the first one. n1 was 937 times 0 0.402 times 1 minus 0 0.402. And then I have to find that with a calculator. So 937 times 0 0.42 times parentheses 1 minus 0 0.42. And that's 228, so that is well above 10. So 228.3 is well above 10. So there's for the N1 group, and then we have to do it again to prove it for the other one. So let me type that in. There, it'll be 932 times 0 0.462 times 1 minus 0 0.462, which is, let's see, 932, 0.462 times parentheses 1 minus 0.462. Technically, we didn't need the time star in that last problem, but that's okay. And we get 231.7. And that is far less than, or far greater than 10. So we are good for both of them. So these are very large samples. Well within, or well above what we needed to ensure normality. And then last but not least, we need little n1 to be less than 0.05, capital N1, and, and little n2 to be less than 0.05, capital N2. And as per usual, we're going to kind of wave our hands at this a little bit and say, well, of course it is. I mean, we're talking about the number of premature babies in the whole world. And so that's going to have to be 937 for N1 and 932 for N2 are going to be well below 5%. There we go, I just thought I'd label those, N1 and N2. So 937 and 932 are far less than 5% of all the premature babies in the world. All right, so that means we've met our requirements, so now we're ready to conduct the hypothesis test. We're going to perform that test with a p-value method using a 0.01 level of significance. And we're trying to determine whether the caffeine therapy was effective in lowering the death or disability rate. So that's interesting. So we want to lower the death and disability rate. So let me make a note of that. And then we have a 0.01 level of significance right here. So let me make a note of that. Sorry, I just want to change my colors there a little bit. Okay, so for the null hypothesis, we're going to assume that the caffeine group and the placebo group are equal to each other. And then the alternative to that is going to be lowering, that the caffeine group is lowering. But remember, since the caffeine group is group 1, that's going to go in front. Oops, sorry about that. I didn't mean to scroll far that, that far down. All right, then step 2 is our alpha. But since it tells us our level of significance is 0.01, if you recall from section 10.1, that means that alpha is 0.01. Because that's what alpha is, it's the level of significance. And now we need to go run this and to find our test statistics. So we're going to get it from the calculator because if you recall, it says right in the inferential statistics sheet, we're not going to do this by hand, we're just going to use the calculator. And it says right here, just use the calculator. So we're not going to bother to try to find all this by hand. Mm -mm -mm. All right, so if we're going to do that with the calculator, we're going to need to enter things into the calculator. So let me grab the calculator, go to stat, go to tests. I want number five, number six, excuse me, two prop Z test. And then I'm going to type in my values here. So X1 is 377, 937, 431, and 932, and we want to make sure we pick a less than to match our alternative. We will think P1 is less than P2. And we're going to go down to Calculate and press Enter. And we will find that the Z-score right there is negative 2.622. And while we're on, on the subject, the P-value is 0 0.004. 
four, four, if you will. So that's going to give us our steps three and four. There we go. So Z zero is negative 2.6223. And that came from the Z test output, the two prop Z test output. And then I drew a picture here to match the left tailed picture for the p-value method. So you're in the p-value method side. You want to draw a left tail, put Z0 down there at the bottom, and label your p-value, which is 0 0.0044. And you have to actually write Z0, p-value, all that stuff. All right, now we need to make a decision. So in the p-value method, we always reject if our p-value is less than alpha. And if you learn nothing else, you want p-values to be low. The lower, the better. Right? You always want low, low, low p-values. Definitely lower than alpha for sure. And this one is 0 0.0044 is less than alpha, which was 0 0.01. Therefore, we are going to reject the null hypothesis. And that means that there is enough evidence to support the claim that that caffeine therapy is lowering the rate of death and disability in premature infants, which would be a good thing. Okay, we're all done with that problem. And now we'll move on to the next one in the next video, I should say, to working that type of problem with a computer instead of with a calculator. So what if you were given computer output? So I'll see you back here for that information.